What's going on, YouTube? Clay Kizolt back again with another Final Fantasy Brave Exvius War of the Visions video. And today we're talking about a unit showcase for Federica, my girl, my waifu. We're going to talk about what Esper, Vision Card, what passives you should take, what reflexibility, or, you know, all that good stuff about this unit. We're going to talk about it and more. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so Frederica is a mobile, long-range shooting lightning unit that is going to be used mainly for damage-dealing means. She specializes in being able to disable their opponents, or her opponents, excuse me, and then also be able to shoot from a long distance and move around the map quickly and get her turns quickly to be outputting as much damage as possible while mitigating her chance of getting hurt in the process. Her Trust Master reward is Victory Ribbon. And remember, guys, to get this, you must have the unit fully limit broken out and six star awakened. You're going to get high HP, some accuracy, and some crit, which is great. You're also going to get the ability Try Protection. And if you guys are wondering where you use your armor pots that you guys keep getting instead of LB pots in that daily, you're going to use them when you can level up uh, abilities like this. Uh, going to nullify, immobilize, disable, and stop for an ally for three turns. It has two uses. This TMR is fantastic, but most of them are going to be pretty good. Nothing game breaking but those stats are amazing, and if you get your hands on this, you're going to be able to, you know, pretty much make a, a, a unit nullify to a lot of the bad things that can happen to them. Looking over at what main job and sub jobs that our girl uh, Frederica has, is we have Gunner, Ninja, and Ranger, and this is going to go together in what I just talked about, making her an extremely quick unit with her agility being high from Ninja, making her be able to move around the map a little bit more thanks to Ninja, and then output that damage at a very far range thanks to our Gunner and our Ranger abilities. So we're going to go ahead and move over to our ability board here, and I need to talk about a few things that you guys may not be aware of. When looking at the ability board, and we're going to go up here for a great example, if you see an ability that has, see those little tiny embroideries around double shot? That means that ability will be on no matter what sub command you have. So it means sub job. If it doesn't, like Sharpshoot does not have them, that means you must have that specific job unlocked and on, excuse me, when we go to ability set right here in the sub command to be able to use it. So again, if it has it like this, any job can use it that you can put on your character. If it has it like this, you must have that job on to be able to use it. Next up with Frederica, there are a few abilities you may be on the lookout for for not learning for right now. One of those being Charge. Now, Charge isn't the big one to look out for, but Charge and Super Charge. You're not going to want to have them on because the AI will love to use those, and they do have a cast time. As you can see, uh, cast speed of 120, and you really want your girl either auto-attacking and building up her AP or using her abilities instantly so you can get in on that chaining because if the unit moves, you cannot chain. And it's just, you know, these abilities you want to kind of uh, stay away from. However... Looking at, and that's when the AI is controlling it. Obviously, you don't have to use these abilities if you're controlling. Looking at charge, though, it's not that big of a deal. You can really make other uh, abilities be more like tantalizing to the AI, where a supercharge does a lot of damage. I'm sure it has a high multiplier. So I may go ahead and get charged to open up these different slots here. I think I'm going to do that. But I am going to totally avoid supercharge. Uh, period for the whole time so those are the only two abilities you have to worry about you can get the other abilities but there are a lot of abilities that i may not use as the ninja subclass is not one i see as an option um you know poison mist and all that when you're using frederica i think you want to go with either gunner and hunter and we're going to talk about the options with that so we're going to head over to ability set and we're going to look what gunner has to offer so if you choose Gunner as your sub command, these are the abilities you have open to you. You have Sidewinder. This is going to deal missile damage to target with piercing. And you can think of piercing as like kind of like unmitigated damage in FFBE, where it's going to help you get through defense on the opponent and bestows Beast Killer. And it's going to shoot in this line right here. It's actually pretty powerful. It shoots in a straight line across. So you got to be careful because you might hit your, you know, your allies or something in it. Um, Great ability to be using when you're fighting a beast, right? If you guys don't know what killers are from FFBE, they allow you to do more damage to that specific type, so you're going to be able to hurt beast a lot more, so that's really good for that. Next up, we have Leg Shot, which is going to be one of our disabling abilities. While Gunner will look at her main abilities that stay on no matter what, because her main job is Gunner, this ability isn't going to stay on unless you have the Gunner sub job. 
Looking at it, it's going to give you guys a chance to immobilize your target for three turns, um, and it has a pretty wide range, as you can see. So, uh, very, very good uh, ability to use. Obviously, if a unit's trying to chase you down or get in range, because Frederica should win a lot of those range battles, uh, uh, you guys can light shot them, immobilize them, move a little bit out of their range, and just start firing on them and doing a lot of damage. And last but not least, we have Council, which is very good. Raises critical rate of all allies within an area around self for three turns. So she has this nice little buff to put everybody's crit rate up around her which is very strong you guys can already th think about that like critting in this game is going to make you do massive amounts of damage and this will be good for doing that moving on we want to go ahead again we're going to skip ninja because that's not really an option for us and look at our ranger abilities that we get first off poison arrow uh we shoot and deal a uh, small amount of damage to a target and a chance of inflicting poison great i mean it's not the best thing in the world but it's pretty good Vigilance, significantly raise own evasion rate for one turn and lowers own elemental resistances and all attack resists. So essentially it gives you a better chance of evading attacks, but if you were to get hit, you are going to get hurt. So I don't really see myself using this ability too much right now. Now, if we get into the point where we're trying to build evasion and we have a bunch of evasion on our unit, we raise up our rate to do that. Maybe we go down this road, but for now, I'm going to stay away from that because if you do get hit, you're probably going to get popped. We have Barrage, which is her AoE ability besides the one we just talked about that shoots in a, great, uh, a straight line. We have one right here that is um, doing damage in like a little burst or uh, like a little, uh, you know, like burst uh, amount. I guess I could say it. I don't know how to describe this, like a little star. And this is going to be a, her main way of farming big clumps of monsters. You're going to want to use Barrage on those people. And Barrage is one of her better abilities when it comes to that. That way you can AoE a little bit with her. And last but not least, we have Sharpshoot, and this ability right here is going to be extremely important as we do move into people using Evade, or when we do move into monsters and stuff being really high evasion, and we need a chance to hit. Deals damage to the target and guarantees a hit, so you don't have to worry about all the evasion stuff or your luck being high, because luck and accuracy work together to make sure you can hit, and luck also helps you with evasion, so luck and evasion uh, adds together for you to evade. Screw all that. You don't have to worry about that. This will hit automatically, which is fantastic when it comes to uh, making sure you dish out the damage. So overall, which of those two do I think should be your sub job? In my opinion, I'm going with Ranger. Now, there's not I'm not saying there's not times when Gunner is going to be the better choice. Obviously, if you need to leg shot something and kite it away, if you guys want to buff up your crit, it's fantastic. And then also, of course, you have this ability here that has piercing and gives you beast killer. When you're fighting a beast, you might want to go with gunner. Um, I think it's very close between the two, but for me personally, I'm going with hunter. So I'm actually going to switch that so I don't, or ranger, excuse me, so I don't forget at a later date. Next up, I want to move to the other ability she has that she will have no matter what you have as your subcommand. First off is aimed fire. Raises missile attack of all allies within an area around self for three turns and range plus one. So essentially, this is going to make you do missile attack as her main way of doing damage. And the way you can tell that is if you go to an ability, and this is important for everybody out there, so make sure you pay attention. This will be important for chaining and all kinds of stuff. That little icon right there shows the type of damage you are doing. So sometimes you see a sword that's slashing down, that means slash damage. Sometimes you see a fist hitting, that's like blunt damage or punch damage, whatever you want to call it. And then you'll see like the uh, magic one for magic attack. The next thing you need to look at when you look at that icon is what color it is, because that color represents what it's going to be doing as far as element wise. So you can see here it's yellow, so that means lightning. So leg shot is going to be doing lightning missile damage. So deals missile damage to target and chance of inflicting immobilize for three turns. So it uh, gives you a chance to. Oh, that's like shot, excuse me, but we already went over that. <laughs> uh, the one we were talking about is here that raises missile attacks. So it's going to have you do more damage on your turns and give you guys range plus one, which is absolutely insane. Very, very good passive uh, to make sure you can, again, stay out of range of your opponents. Blackout is the other one that you get for uh, sure that you always have unlocked. It deals damage to target and chance of inflicting blind. So if they're blinded, they're going to have a chance of missing more and your evasion and their accuracy is obviously going down. So that's great to, you know, again, land a debuff, get your opponent to maybe not smack you in the face a little bit and let you live a little bit longer. Moving on over, we have another ability that's uh, down here. It's called Arm Shot. Deals damage large, L. I wish they had actual numbers in here instead of just S, M, and L. Um, and target chance of inflicting Disable for three turns. So Disable's a great other um, uh, debuff she can land. Again, she is a debuff master. She has lots of options to her. And she's dealing large amounts of damage. And you can see it's missile damage with a little bit of the uh, lightning effect there. Moving on up, there's another one in Vital Shot. Deals damage medium to target with high chance of critical rate 
or hit, excuse me, and one panel knockback. So when you use this ability, you have a higher chance to crit on it, and then you also knock the opponent back. So this could be very good, again, if you're kiting, the opponent's getting too close, you just want to hit really hard with a crit and knock them back so that they have to, maybe you can move out of their range where they can't move up against you or something like that. This is the option for you in Vital Shot. Very, very good ability. I like it a lot. Moving up to her best ability, in my opinion, um, it's very debatable. The thing about Frederica is she has so much good stuff. Double Shot deals two hit damage medium to target. What that means is she will chain with herself. She will hit, then hit again, and it will be a normal chain because it's both missile damage or range damage, and then it will also be double uh, lightning damage hitting, so it will start an elemental chain. If any of you guys out there are having trouble chaining, you will start to see a lot of units have these two-hit abilities. Um, uh, uh, Lynx is one of them. Excuse me, the newest ninja that came out. And then I do believe there's some kind of monk that can do it uh, as well with Pummel. Uh, well, obviously, uh, Shize can do it. Uh, but I'm talking about a lightning monk. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lightning monk that I can chain with her. It might already be out. You guys let me know in the comments below. But this ability is going to be great. If you have your own Frederica and you take a Frederica friend, you're going to be able to chain up to four because the chains do carry over into death. So as long as it lives through your double shot, you can shoot it with another Frederica. Even if it dies in the first hit, the chain's going to carry over and you're going to be able to get those missions. In a time where we're going to be fighting bosses where they don't just die in one hit, this is going to be very, very helpful with starting that chain and then chaining on itself and doing a lot of damage. So I really, really like this move. If I'm talking about what I'm going to level up first, obviously you level up all of your abilities. I think they're all fantastic and need to be leveled for situations, but I think it's between sharpshoot and uh, double shot for me personally. Uh, strictly speaking, because double shot, you want all that damage, and then this is a guaranteed hit, so if you ever run into a problem where if somebody keeps evading in the arena, this is an option for you just to take them out and be like, get out of here, dude! Uh, and then I uh, really like Vital Shot as well, with that critical hit chance being up. That's going to do some major damage, but sometimes knocking a unit back can be a little troublesome. Next, let's move into uh, uh, her LB, which is Butterfly Sting. This ability right here is fantastic. If you guys haven't seen my CT video talking about time turns and... Um, you know, how agility affects that, what's your CT bar, what does that mean, and then, you know, how does that work with casting time? You really need to check that video out. Put it out a few days ago. It's got a lot of great information there. Here, Butterfly Sting is going to do some really good damage, but also lower the uh, target CT. So what that means is they're just going to knock him back from taking a turn. It's going to knock him down the turn order, which is fantastic for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, you're doing big damage, knocking him down their CT. Awesome, awesome limit burst. I would definitely level this bad boy up. I'm working on Medina right now but it's still an option. Now we're moving over to her passives and her reactions. I'm going to talk about her reactions first because it's much more simple. Looking at her reactions, you have counter shot, which does damage. Uh, when you take damage, can counter with damage or reflex. Reflex, excuse me, chance of evading all attacks. This right here is what you want to level and have on at all times. She literally has the chance to proc this and then just dodge the attack. How could you not want this? This is amazing stuff amazing amazing stuff and you want to have it on and speaking of reaction abilities i know a lot of people are wondering what bravery and what faith you want to have on your uh unit and with frederica you want to have max of both i do believe and the reason i say that is yes she is going to take more magic damage because faith will be up and if you don't know what bravery or faith does i also have a video like my ct video covering that in great detail how to raise and lower it and uh, what exactly it means for the game but because she lands so many debuffs and the more faith you have helps you with landing those debuffs i think you want to have a maxed out faith you will be getting nuked by magic damage dealers it's up to you if you want to do that. You can leave it at 30 if you rather just, hey, leave it up to chance with you landing those debuffs. But I think in the end, I'm going to end up raising my faith up. And uh, bravery, you want maxed out on all units, period. They just want to have max bravery. Moving on to the next is support. <laughs> support. And I wish this girl could have all her supports on because they're all amazing. The two you guys see here are the two that I'm going to mainly stick with. We have concentrate. Plus two range and lowers evasion rate. As you level this up, it will not be giving you any more range, to my knowledge. It will just be helping you not lose as much evasion rate. So you want to level that bad boy up to make sure that evasion rate isn't too low. Think about it, guys. Plus two range? Are you kidding? It's amazing. Definitely have this on. It's awesome. The next ability I'm going to have on is Shadow Runner, which raises agility and luck. And like I've talked about, luck helps with you evading and you hitting. And that's very important for our ranger here, so we want to have that. Agility, if you haven't seen the CT video, I know I keep bringing this up, but I want you guys to have the most knowledge you can to be successful. Please watch that video. Um, agility is going to help you take more turns faster. And it is so important. It helps you go first in the arena. It helps you take more turns. You could lap people in the arena if this is high enough. And this is why I'm choosing to use this passive. 
Now, let's look at her other passive, shall we? We have Missile Mastery. Raises missile attack, and again, she does do missile, missile damage. So this just flat out raises how much damage she can do. Amazing, right? Yes. But the problem is she has so many other amazing ones. We're going to go ahead and let this one go for the utility of the other ones, in my opinion. We have Ranger's Lore. Give you another range. So if you have this one and the other one, you have plus three range and raises accuracy rate. This is amazing as well. I could see situations where you might want all of this one. Um, but again, I'm not going to choose that as the main one, but it's, it's amazing. And I wouldn't be mad if you did. And there are going to be situations where you may want all of that range with that accuracy rate up. And last, but, oh, that's not last. There's one more after this. But the one that's going to be controversial um, is Sukuchi. I hope I'm saying that right. Sukuchi is the ninja move. Move plus move and jump plus one. Absolutely amazing. Anybody in the world would want to be using this passive. But the thing about it is, and now if it's a physical damage, or not a physical, excuse me, a melee damage dealer, yes, you would want this, right? Because you need to move up. You need to stay on your target. You need to make sure you're in range. But we're dealing with someone who has range plus two and who is already... A, a gunner, hunter, a ranger. I don't exactly know. The jump's nice, right? Jump, jump lets you do is, you know, move over terrain that's a little too much tall. You know, it's not just a one block. It's up higher. And, you know, you can jump over that. But in the end, I think I want my unit taking more turns faster and going first to lay out that damage. I don't think she needs to move and jump all the time. There may be times when you need it and you will want to put this ability on. But it's not an all the time use one, in my opinion. And the last one that I didn't get to talk about and I haven't unlocked yet is Focus. Significantly reduces activation time. If you don't know what that means, please watch the CT video. It will explain what that means, but it essentially uh, lowers the amount you need to for a spell to be cast with the cast time. And that includes this uh, charge over here that I haven't unlocked yet. And then raises missile attack. So I'm assuming because this has the re uh, significantly reduces activation time, it will raise the attack less than the one that just says raise missile attack. And so I don't really see myself using this as I do believe there's only two moves that she can even activate this with uh, for the most part. And I'm not going to be unlocking them anyway, or if I am, I'm only unlocking charge for now. So I'm going to let that one sit on the back burner. Those are the ones I think you should uh, keep. This is how I think your girl should be laid out. Obviously, different scenarios call for different measures. And as I've explained them, hopefully you guys understand when you would want to switch between them all. Because she's a very complicated unit due to how awesome her passives are. Units cry to have these passives. They're so good. Next up, we're going to talk about her equipment. We're going to head over to favorite equipment here. And you can see what I have on her. We have the gun that's in the current um, equipment crafting uh, event. And let me tell you guys, for that event, I would only do the uh, missions that you have in the mission tab. Do all of those and then stop doing the event. This gun is amazing, and so is the sword, or the katana, or whatever, but their recipes are in the shop. You do not have to grind for these recipes. I mean, it's going to be, you're going to get them, I'm going to put quotation marks, faster if you grind for them. Their drop rates are abysmal, but uh, you can just wait it out, right? As long as you have enough gill, you have a chance. I actually bought this gun recipe before this gun even became an event item, and so yeah, we're sticking with that. So I would suggest not to farm that. Uh, you cannot get the awakening books from it. There are not a drop. You can check the drop rates. Make sure you guys check drop rates before you start randomly going ha ham with it. Uh, but this weapon is very, very good. And there are two types of uh, weapon types that I think you should be rolling for, and that's assault and then crit. Because crit is amazing. This is the gun you want to have on your uh, Frederica. It's the best gun that I know of that's in the game right now. Um, and you can either run, uh, you can roll assault to get double attack and try to roll the stat into attack, uh, or you can go with crit because she really likes crit as well to be dishing out that damage. It's really up to you. The next piece of equipment I have on her is the hero's ring, and it gives a brainer, uh, bra brainery, <laughs> bravery bonus six, which is fantastic, giving her some more accuracy and crit. And that's where I am in the game right now. I just want to point out one other item that is very, very strong that I'm going to be having on her once I unlock the third slot, and that's going to be this sage's hat. Right now, it doesn't look like the greatest thing in the world. Uh, it has do a dodge chance on it, and that's what you want. But it will learn an ability as you plus it up to give you evade, which is what you want on all your squishy people. You want a chance to evade. And that's what this ability right here will turn into once we get this thing plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So if you're looking inside of the... Uh, the store, and you're not sure what to buy recipe-wise, Sage's Hat is by far one of the best items in the game. Buy it up. Just a little bit of a tip there. Next up, we're going to discuss what vision cards to use. Now, the best vision card isn't out yet for the units. I mean, you would want to use something like maybe... Um, 
Tetra Sylphid is really, really strong for her, but she's not out yet. So the next best thing we're going to be using is this right here, Sharpen Concentration. Gives you guys accuracy up, a little bit of spirit down, but with the way I'm building her, she's getting nuked by magic anyway. Um, and then it gives you Missile Attack up for the party. So this will apply to everyone in the party that has like a, a ranged weapon. As long as they're doing missile damage, it's going to help them. So if you have Raryu, I think it's how you say his name, the, the Dark Gunner, it's going to help him as well. So this thing is very, very strong when it comes to ranged users. Um, and the only other one that I would think about using right now, I mean, there are, you know, if you have to use the lower ones, it's fine, would be uh, Secret Order is one of the more, uh, another one of the best uh, vision cards in the game. Because of this agility up, uh, the slash attack is going to apply to everybody else in the party. Sadly, it won't help you, but again, agility up, taking more turns. Uh, <laughs> starting out first in PvP. Great stuff here with Secret Orders. So that's another option. A lot of people are suggesting uh, to use this horn card, if I can find it real quick. Looks like my cards have been all shuffled around. Sorry, I'm having a hard time finding it. There it is. This horn card, right? Because it gives you attack percent. And while um, users, gun users, obviously want to do attack because they do uh, attack damage, it's not that great because you are also using luck you're losing luck excuse me and again luck helps you hit and evade and so i don't still think it's worth it for this minus luck here efreet would be amazing that would be the one other one that i would think about using but i sadly don't have efreet and then in the future we're looking at tetra sylphid would be great moving on to the espers now uh for the end of this uh video here the, the espers in this game i have just not been lucky with okay i really want achieva i really want efreet um but when it comes to ranged units uh again you're going to be looking at something like tetra sylphid going to be great for ranged units when she does come out so if you're thinking about using a lot of ranged units go for tetra sylphid the next one would be odin and i'm going to tell you guys odin right now when he drops will be one of the best espers for any physical attacker in the game if you don't like I, he would be like what i would uh pretty much say is a must get uh, although you will be pulling a lot in this game and Odin could show up later. It's not like he's limited to or anything, at least not to my knowledge. So you can go for him. But for right now, what do we have in this game? You go with Efreet if you have him. A lot of people don't like the Esper Efreet too much. They like the Vision card, but they don't like the Esper. He's still the best option right now. The only thing I have that I can use is the next step down is good old Behemoth, all right? I'm getting me some nice attack, getting me some agility, some luck, some dexterity. And then we go to the uh, dexterity helps with crit chance, by the way. And then look at the Esper board. We do get some accuracy moving up here. We get some attack percent, and then we get a lot of killers and evasion rate. So you can see we get evasion rate. We sadly can't take advantage of the slash attack up, but that's okay. We have a lot of other things we can use. So it's really beneficial to be leveling up your Espers and looking at their boards, even if you don't have the exact old OP ultimate one that you want. And you really need to set your uh, Chocobo expeditions to... Um, whatever one you're really looking for so right now i have it on uh behemoth and on cactuar cactuar is amazing i just give a little tidbit in here cactuar is amazing for the man eater it has magic up on it so it's gonna be really good for somebody like medina if you don't have shiva you know what i mean so that's like the, like the budget the budget shiva right now for us guys is gonna be cactuar so overall like i said this unit frederica is gonna be good from here until tomorrow an extremely strong unit uh can be built extremely fast thanks to the ninja um sub job along with having extremely long range i uh, can dish up some crit, uh, excuse me some crits some guaranteed hits and some chaining on her own i love her to death my little uh woodland hunter is coming out here to strike uh fear into the hearts of my enemies and i love it so much so if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up comment down below with any questions you may have or any suggestions that i may have gone uh missed uh, as i'm going over this video subscribe to me here on youtube catch me on my twitch channel twitch.tv slash and i'll catch you guys in the next video